biology. So let's now look at the kidney. So whereby we see that the kidney is an organ found in vertebrates and each organism is made up of two kidneys or rather each organism has two kidneys. So you see that the kidneys are bean shaped as you can see so we have the left and the right. So the kidneys are bean shaped and are dark red in color. So they lie near the back of the abdominal cavity and about the level of the waistline. So somewhere here, about the level of the waistline, exactly, above the level of the waistline, that is exactly where we find the two kidneys uh, being positioned. So for the kidneys, we see that the functions of the kidney are, one of the functions is excretion, the second function of the kidney is osmoregulation, the third function of the kidney is Maintaining ionic balance in the body. Ionic balance means the balance of the different minerals, e.g. sodium, magnesium, calcium, etc., etc. So the other function of the kidney is regulation of pH in the body by absorption of water or uh, by reabsorption of water or not absorbing water at all. So it's going to maintain a constant pH of the body. So apart from that, we see that for the weight of the kidney, we see that each kidney weighs approximately 142 grams. That is about the size of a clenched fist. So like a size of a clenched fist. So the kidney weighs about 142.5 grams. So the size of a clenched fist, that's how they assume it. So the size of a clenched fist. So after that, uh, like apart from that, we see that the right kidney is generally slightly lower than the left kidney. So the right kidney, in a conga chini, the left kidney is slightly higher than the right kidney. So the kidney is also surrounded by a layer of fat which helps to cushion it from mechanical or physical injury. So this fat is very much important. If one maybe has a trauma on the upper abdominal part, so that trauma is not going to directly affect the kidney. Why? Because of the thick fat layer that the kidney is suspended in. So remember we talked about the subcutaneous, uh, the subcutaneous fat layer. So it attaches the organs to the skin. So remember again we say that the skin is found to the outside and also to the inside of the body. So the subcutaneous fat layer is responsible for attaching the kidney to the part of the skin which is now the dermis. So, and here we have seen that the, the kidney is also surrounded by a thick fat layer. So this thick fat layer acts as a shock absorber. So when someone has had a blunt trauma on the upper abdominal part, so the kidneys are not going to feel the direct trauma of the impact. Why? Because of the cushioning of the different subcutaneous fat layer around the kidney. So apart from that, you see that the kidney is basically supplied with blood from the general circulatory system via the renal artery, which is a branch of the aorta. As you can look at this diagram, so locate the kidney. So you can see that the kidney is receiving blood from the renal artery, which is a branch of the, of the aorta. So remember, aorta, this is the main artery which removes blood or yeah, which removes blood from the heart and supplies it to the whole part of the body. So there's this branch of aorta which is called the renal artery, which is a branch of the aorta supplying the kidney with oxygenated blood. So from this we see that blood from the kidney goes back to the gener general circulatory system by the use of the renal vein. So anytime in exam you will see a renal blood vessel, always know that the renal blood vessel mainly means that it is a blood vessel for the kidney. So renal blood vessels, these are the blood vessels for kidney. Just as we will see in the, in the upcoming subtopic that hepatic blood vessels, these are, are the blood vessels to supply the liver with blood. But now here, the renal blood vessels, these are the blood vessels which are responsible to supply the kidney with blood. So don't forget that. So renal blood vessel, these are the blood vessels for the kidney uh, to supply the kidney with blood. So basically we see that from the kidney we have a tube which is called ureter. So urine from the kidney comes from the kidney through that tube which is called ureter. So the ureter is connected to the urinary bladder. And then the urinary bladder is connected now to, to the urethra. So this urethra now opens to the outside in order to release now urine to the surrounding. So that is exactly how it goes. So first of all, remember, we have the kidney. 
So the kidney is connected to the ureta, those tubes which remove urine from the kidney and to the bladder. They are called ureta. So from the ureter, we now go to the urinary bladder, whereby the urinary bladder is now connected to the urethra, which now uh, releases blood to the surrounding uh, through the process of excretion. So it releases urine to the surrounding through the process, which is called excretion. So for the males, we see that the males basically have a long urethra as compared to females. So the male urethra is long. The female urethra is very short. And since the female urethra is very short, this makes females to be prone of getting urinary tract infection diseases. Why? Because the urethra is very short. So the urethra being very short, it's easy for bacteria to enter into the short urethra and into the urinary system as a whole. But for the males, since the urethra is very long, by the time the bacteria are trying to go up the urinary system, they'll be destroyed by the, harmful, by the harmful acidity nature in the urethra. So it will be very difficult for the pathogens to climb up the urethra and into the urinary system to destroy the urinary system. But for the females, we see that since females have a very short urethra, it is easier for pathogens to enter into the urinary system and begin to, uh, to, to cause destruction. Also, apart from that, we see that the urethra in males, it is used for two functions. The first function of urethra in males is to, transport, uh, is to transport urine from the urinary bladder. The second function of the urethra is to transport sperms from the testes. So these are the gametes. So it's to transport male gametes from the testes and into the surrounding. So now since the urethra in males, it is used for transportation of urine and transportation of sperms. So the urethra in male is therefore referred to as a ure urinogenital system. So it is called a urinogenital system because it can be able to transport urine as well as transport sperms during the process of reproduction. So since it does two functions, that's why it is referred to as urinogenital system because it serves to transport to, uh, two main substances or two main products in the male body. So apart from that, uh, we have two sphincter muscles, as you can see. So we have two sphincter muscles that encircle the urethra. So these two sphincter muscles are the ones which control the re release of urine from the urethra. So if someone has gone to release urine, the sphincter muscles are going to relax. If they relax, urine is going to be let to pass through uh, from the bladder and into the urethra and into the surrounding. So the reason as to why sometimes you feel like going to pee or going for a short call is because the sphincter muscles are holding tight the urine in the bladder. They, are, they don't want to release the urine. So that pain of I'm feeling to go to pee, it comes from the sphincter muscle. And that's why when you go to relieve yourself, you feel that relaxation. You feel relaxed. It's because those muscles have also relaxed and then it brings that sensation of feeling relaxed. So now this is the diagram this is the structure of the kidney this is the structure of the kidney which shows the three main parts of the kidney whereby we have the pel pelvis medulla and the cortex so this is the external view over here and over there we have now the internal view of the kidney so take note that uh, on the cortex on the far end of the cortex we have those very small structures so those very small structures they are referred to as the nephrons so what's the function of the nephrons that we'll see? We'll see that the function of the nephrons is to remove urine, is ultrafiltration, is like to filter out waste products from the blood. So the waste products from the blood will be taken to form urine and then the sexual products from the blood will be led to circulate, to continue circulating the, the body. Like for example, these essential products are like, for example, we'll have what? We'll have the blood cells, the different proteins, so the things which will be removed from the blood, example, we have urea, excess water, excess mineral salts, etc., etc. So that is the, uh, the diagram of the kidney. But now since we have the diagram of the kidney, what are the functions of the kidney that we have just uh, seen before we go to the nephron? So the functions of the kidney, remember we say that the first function was excretion. So through excretion, excess water, excess salt, 
uh, nitrogenous waste and urea will be removed from the body. Apart from that, the other function of the kidney, remember we say that it is osmoregulation. So this is just the regulation of water in the body. So regulation of water in the body. So remember, osmosis mainly deals with water. Osmoregulation, regulation of water in the body. Apart from that, the other function of kidney is pH regulation as well as ionic balance in the body. Ionic balance simply means the regulation of mineral ions in the body, be it sodium, be it calcium, be it magnesium, be it chlorine, etc. So ionic balance in the body. Biology.